Mark, has there been a difference in FDA regulation with the new administration? There's definitely a difference in the way the, the new Obama administration and the FDA mm -hmm. uh, personnel that have come into the agency uh, are regulating dietary supplements compared to previous administration the last there few is. years. Absolutely, uh, it's clear. Why would that be? Well, first of all, you have to recognize that, uh, that and this is no surprise to most people, I think, mm -hmm. that uh, a democratically controlled administration is going to be usually more assertive, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, toward consumer interests than a Republican administration, which generally tends to, more, to be more favorable to business interests. That's generally one of the ways that people contrast the Democratic versus Republican uh, philosophies of the parties, mm -hmm. uh, especially from an administrative perspective. So you already have that predilection, if you will, or predisposition of the Democrats to be more, let's make sure we protect the consumer against abuses by industry right. or bad products or whatever, protect the public, whatever. And the Republicans say, we want to make sure that we have less government affecting the ability of business to work in a more laissez-faire economy, mm -hmm. which includes less regulation, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a difference in philosophical view. All right. That's the philosophical level or the on a political level. Uh, on an actual level, uh, the new... Uh, administration with Dr. Hamburg and Dr. Sharfstein as the, the FDA commissioner and deputy commissioner respectively have already indicated in the first six months of their regime mm -hmm. uh, that they are going to be much more active and proactive against uh, all kinds of problems not just in the dietary supplement community but also in the general food area especially mm -hmm. with respect to concerns about food safety recalls uh, manufacturers uh, putting uh, what some people might consider to be bogus or questionable mm -hmm. uh, seals of approval on their packaging, like a little check mark that says that Fruit Loops are really good for you, <laughs> and trying to fool people to think that that the sugar-laden fruit-flavored, uh, artificial fruit-flavored cereal is supposed to be good for kids. All right. But, so there's probably some good things that are coming out yeah, of this assertiveness like of the FDA that they're showing that, look, you know, mm -hmm. they're standing up in the industry saying, hey, wait a minute, industry, you can't do this, okay. you know. This, I mean, say Fruit Loops are really, are, are, what is that called, SmartWise, whatever that was. Yeah, and there was Cheerios was taken to task about the claiming to, to lower cholesterol. And yeah, now on Cheerios with cholesterol, I think that because, I think, believe, I think that Cheerios is made with whole oats, and there's some evidence that whole right. oat fiber can actually uh, lower cholesterol levels. So to what extent Cheerios were actually uh, shown to lower cholesterol levels in a controlled clinical trial, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I haven't watched that part of it yet, <laughs> okay. but uh, I can see why the FDA might go after that. But uh, at the same time, if oats and the oats in Cheerios do lower cholesterol, then depending on how that's measured, mm -hmm. that might be a, a claim or a message that would be constructive for consumers to know. I mean, I believe oatmeal probably has some cholesterol-lowering properties, again, depending right. on what kind of oatmeal and how it's made or all that. Mm -hmm. But this thing with the check mark called, you know, Smart Choice, or whatever it was called, yes. and the Fruit Loops and stuff, I think was an abuse of the whole mm -hmm. idea of consumer messaging using uh, those kind of logos. And I think the FDA acted rightly in this area. Getting back to herbs and supplements, uh, the FDA is very concerned right now about H1N1 claims, uh, swine flu virus, as we taped this uh, in November of 2009, mm -hmm. going into the winter and flu season. We're already into the winter and flu season in many parts of the country. Uh, the FDA is rightfully uh, concerned in this area. Now, I think the FDA has taken a policy right now of you know shooting the, shoot first and aim later. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say that with no disrespect. I think they, what they're doing is they're monitoring websites that have any information that suggests that any kind of product, not just herbs or supplements, but hand washers or um, you know, air purifiers or shampoos that are on there uh, mm -hmm. that claim to be in some way reduce the chance that you'll have an H1N1 infection or something. Oh. They're going out and they're sending warning letters to those companies within 24 hours. They've got mm -hmm. somebody in front of a computer probably terminal just Googling and checking the web out all the time to find these things out. They're not going out and knocking on doors and checking on plants or they're just checking through the web. And all right. Whatever shows up on the web, they're going after it. And frankly, I think a lot of people uh, will agree that in many cases, maybe there's some exceptions, that the FDA is rightfully uh, taking a very strong action in this area because consumers are so concerned about H1N1 or the swine flu issue that they may be easily uh, led to believe that some products uh, might be useful that, in fact, maybe are not. Because they're frightened. 
They're frightened. Mm -hmm. they may, you know, I wouldn't say desperate, but they're frightened and mm -hmm. they're concerned. 